Where were we? Yeah, here. Yeah. Well, here, set 10. Yeah. Right, so that continued to take personal inventory. The funny thing, too, if you see it, there's two inventories are quite a lot in the program. So you do step four, you do, you do one step 10, and then you, you actually do one before step 11 because they figure if your head's done, if the house isn't clean, there isn't gonna, you're not gonna be able to meditate anyway. So they always talk about reviewing stuff before you sit to meditate and things. But uh, step 10 was something I did religiously. The lady I talked to about earlier, who passed, who killed herself last week, she used to always kid me about doing inventories every night. And then after many years, and then she went out, and then she kept going in and out. And then I, I, one night, in a joking way, I walked up walked up to her, I said, those inventories paid off, yeah. So I did inventories for a few years every night, the way they say to do it. And what happened was it kept glaringly sh showing me how repetitive the selfing is. It's basically, you could find a journal of 20 years ago, and it would be, every sentence would be, I'm afraid of, and then a different op topic, but the same, I'm afraid of, yeah. Or I'm this, I'm that. And it's just a small freaking loop constantly going on with different nouns, you know? Like, like, you know, I think because Maria left me, it's different than when Wendy left me, you know? But there was a leaving of me, you know? It's just, and then you start seeing, like, when you go over, you know, you have a lot of relationships and some, none of them seem to work, and then you realize, what's the constant in all those relationships? It's you, you know? So it's always the whole point, like, I, I like to go back to the fourth step, the two, uh, because everyone drinking in lava right now does the first two columns. They, knew, they know who they're mad at and why, but it just leads to them getting another drink. But AA just takes it a little farther and says, what was your role in things, yeah? And in, really, in a sense, all spirituality just keeps taking you back farther to see your role in things. And there's, a, there's a, a text called The Course in Miracles, you may have heard about it. A lot of people in AA get involved with it. And The Course in Miracles, they take it way back and they say you're the dreaming of the dream, yeah? So your role here is huge, or that you're giving, you and I are giving everything all the meaning it has. That's a huge role to play, yes? So, and you can see it, you can see that this is a dream in a sense because of, uh, just the basic subjective experience here. So everyone here is at the same event, but we're not going to experience it the same way. Because we're the main ingredient of the experience in every experience. Like in physics, they say the greatest influence of any experiment is the experiment. Of, yeah. And they are now they're talking about as soon whatever is observed is distorted by is distorted by the observation. We're the observation. So it's based on how we see things are based on our condition, yeah? Yet we, but, but like the Course in Miracles would say it beautifully, the Course would say it's projection, not perception. But when we're, when we're caught up in self and being a body, we think we're perceiving a real thing and we don't see our role in things. But the Course would say we're projecting it and then this apparatus perceives it. And this apparatus, the brain takes it to be real. But we're the dreaming of the place. So you, f you can look into a lot of spirituality and they always wanna take you farther back to take you out of the level of blame and should and shouldn't and just see your role in things. Because that's where the relief lies. It doesn't, or I have to pray that other people get better all fucking day. Yeah, the people that drive me crazy. Yeah, so. That, that idea of fourth column going back is the same thing with the, with the tenth step. And also, a lot of people forget to write the assets and how good things are going, to do a little inventory of Jesus Christ. Because a lot of, I really believe, most of our days in AA, after we submitted to AA, and we're being changed, is in that one like giant migration of all these alcoholics from a failed system, like it says in the fear inventory, perhaps there's a better way, trusting something infinite rather than finite self. So 
I know what's trusting fine, how trusting finite self looks like. I'm believing the thoughts in my head, yeah? But trusting something if infinite has nothing to do with believing the thoughts in my head. It has to do with believing something other than the thoughts, to be led by something other than the thoughts, yeah? So it says perhaps there's a better way, that trusting. And I, I have to keep work, the people I work with, I have to keep reminding them to honor the demonstrations of the workable system because the head will forget a miracle in an hour, but will remember a resentment about something that never happened for 40 fucking years. It's got a weird bias, yeah? And so a lot of times we need to do a lot of things to sort of level the playing field because you're not in a level playing field. So step 10 is just to, pers to you know, continue to take personal inventory. And to me, it's really an impersonal inventory because I'm seeing self as other at that point, yeah? And I, I have stopped calling resentments mine. I have stopped calling fear mine, yeah? Fear arises when there's a, there's a, the mind is in reliance in self. That's how it goes because the, res, the response of mind when it's relying on something that's failed is anxiety. Watch people who believe in thoughts. They're, they're, the faith, you know what, let me read this thing. Tell me what you think about this. It's a part that's rarely pointed out in uh, We Agnostics by Bill W. I can find it. Really, I heard it at a book study, and then the same chapter was read a couple days later at another book study, so I figured I was supposed to be listening to it. Yeah? And it goes here. Can we find we agnostics in it? Yeah, 40, well, I can't see it. 44, page 44. Page 44. Yeah. What, what are you talking about? The black power? Are you talking about? I'm this thing. <clears throat> want to find this. It's really cool because he talks about faith unbelievably. 52, 54? Uh, is it 52? 54? All right, so yeah, he's talking, obviously he's talking to people trying to convince them about alcoholism and stuff. He goes, but let us think a little more closely. Without knowing it, had we not been brought to where we stood by a certain kind of faith, so where I stood was, I'm fucked. Yeah. It's page 53, the bottom of page 53. And not the first sentence, the second sentence goes, without knowing it, had we not been brought to where we stood by a certain kind of faith, for did not we, did we not believe in our own reasoning or in our own thinking? Yeah, what is that but faith? Yeah. Did we not have confidence in our ability to think? What was that but a sort of faith? Exactly. You, yes, we have been faithful all, uh, we have been faithful, abjectly faithful to the God of reason, to our fucking head, yes? So in one way or another, we discovered that faith had been involved all the time, like all the time, like right now. So if you see, if you have faith in a failed system, the thought system, it's gonna produce anxiety. That's how powerful faith is. And I believe this whole event right now is an expression of faith. We believe there's a world, we believe there's separation, we believe we're bodies, and then we're trying to become spiritual, but as a freaking body. <coughs> what is that but faith? So if you watch, I watch people, they have faith in a thought system, they're in a lot of freaking anxiety, going to therapists once a week to talk about what's not happening, really, yeah? That same faith, if it could be moved to a workable system, because the problem is self can't get out of self, so if I try to move it, it's like the problem trying to move part of the problem to the solution, that's a huge problem, yeah? So. The faith is like you, you get disillusioned, which is great. So with the hopes that interruption, the faith can be turned over to something greater than that system. 
And that's the lifelong process of perhaps there's a better way. And you're moving from that failed system to the infinite system. What has to weaken the faith and thoughts? How are we going to weaken the faith and thoughts? We can't as the thinker. Thinking about weakening the faith of the thought, you know, faith and thoughts is faith and thoughts. We have to see that we're not the thinker. How, is, how hard is it if you listen to everyone in a room sharing their thoughts? They sure sound like your thoughts. How, if they're your thoughts, how can, how can they be your, your... You can't be having mine. The whole idea of mine is this is my book. You don't have it. Yeah? So obviously if they're not my thoughts, they're thoughts. And in our case, they're mostly the GPS we're being saddled with is alcoholic. So we're having alcoholic thoughts all the while believing we're the ones who are thinking those thoughts. That's the bondage of self. That's faith in the failed system. That's how it defeats us. It's our own faith being misdirected into a failed system. If you, if you could get relief from the failed system and then the spirit directed your faith, you would be in a sense of ease and comfort right now. Your faith would be producing viable results now instead of scaring the shit out of you based on what's not happening. It's the same faith. It's just what it's... See, faith is going to manifest here by the vehicle it's put in. If it's put into a failed thought system, it's going to produce tons of anxiety. Yeah? If it's put in, who knows? Something infinite, it produces an ease and comfort in your own skin right now. The exact same faith, exactly. It has nothing to do with the faith, it has to do where it's being put. That's why we're so lucky as alcoholics. We have realized, hopefully on some level, any life, any life run on self-will can hardly be a success. We have realized that self has defeated us. But the problem is, we may call self ego and think we have an ego. Yeah? And then maybe think we lose, lose an ego. But the real bondage of self is the feeling of being the one who had the ego and the one who lost the ego. That doesn't go away. That's the bonding point. It's an act of being identified as something you're not that has the ego and then something that you're not that loses an ego. How many people lost their ego, but they're still fucked by self? <laughs> exact nature of the wrong. It's like it's got to be a surgery. It's got to be a scalpel. You can't just throw a dart towards it. You've got to see exactly what's happening in a way, because if you do see it, just like when shit's revealed in the fourth step through the fifth step, that's, the, that's the, the material that comes up and is recognized in six and seven. If you didn't do the fourth and fifth, the same shit would be, still be running you from the darkness, from the shadows. We, we suddenly are brought into the light and then we can see what we're not. We can see the defects of character before the consequential level. We can see the blueprint and realize they can't manifest but through us. You know, I can tell, I can think I hate my girlfriend for hundreds of times, but one time I say it, it goes out there and I say I hate her, now maybe I watch a movie and I forgot I said that to her, she doesn't. And after the next day she calls all her friends, they don't. I'm tattooed now because the thought compelled the fucking action. The only way a thought can compel those kinds of actions if it's preceded by mine. Our thinking the thought is real causes the action. And then the action tattoos us, we're on the fly paper, and then it's all harm reduction, basically. And now the whole program, in a lot of places, they've just given up of, in the possibility of being free. Now they're just shooting for harm reduction. Because there's, if, if you could see that which is defeating you as other, you could entertain being free from it. And I'm telling you, I bet you you would start having some space between it and you. 
but it's difficult if you keep saddling up next to it. If you're in the act of being identified as it, then you're, all your attempts to get out of it is the big, it's actually the biggest aspect of being in it. The greatest thing to, this is what happens. I talk to a lot of spiritual groups and it's, and you know, there's an aspect of the same mental state called spiritual seeking. But you know what? We're luckier. They don't have interventions. <laughs> People don't come at a spiritual talk and go, all right, you've had enough. <laughs> That's it. Put the fucking DVD down. You know, no more retreats. No, they don't. The seeking just goes on and on and on, on and on and on. At least we're so flamboyant, they fucking put a stop to us, usually. Yeah? And then maybe something that you see, and then you see your role in things, Jesus Christ, and you realize then, then that statement self can't get out of self, I hope it cracks open on your head. Because if that shoe fits, wear it. Realize you can't get out of what you think you're in because you're truly not in it. You can't transcend an imaginary place. You can't leave an imaginary place. Trying to get out of an imaginary place gives it a reality it doesn't deserve. Like St. Francis says, you and I are what we're looking for right now. These, these, all these cryptic statements, there's this one great Zen master, Hoang Po, from China. He said, you can't use the Buddha to seek the Buddha. You can't use big M mind or awareness to seek awareness. You can't use light to seek light. You can do it for eons, nothing's going to happen. Now, why would he say that to a Steve or a Bill or a Bob? He didn't see the Steve, Bill, or Bob. He saw the Buddha. And he was trying to talk, hopefully, around Steve, or somehow under Steve, to get to the Buddha in there, so the Buddha would go, fuck. That's insane, the Buddha looking for the Buddha. But to Steve, it makes total sense. Yeah? Because Steve needs some Buddha. Steve's fucked up. Steve's this and Steve's that. But in fact, <laughs> you, you are the Buddha, yes? How hard is that to realize? It doesn't take any time at all. What will it do? I don't know, find out. What I've seen over the years, I've ab I was, have been able to travel lighter, seemingly somehow in this vehicle or attached to it, and this vehicle is fucking crazy. I've been, I have more scars than most of everyone in this room. I, people don't get run over twice in one night. They don't. Shit happened to me, unfucking believable shit. Yeah? I just love AA, and I love the tribe. And I just want to, I think, I don't care if you like this message or not, but you have the right to fucking hear it. And I don't want people to have to leave AA to hear this. Yeah? And I love the idea, that statement Herbert Spencer said, contempt prior to investigation, because I feel a lot of AA people are in that. They get, you bring it, you cannot bring a message into AA without running into it's not AA. So I'm in AA and I'm bringing the message to AA. Yeah. Snuck it in already. And then because this extended the, the information that Bill W and the big, and to me, I don't think Bill W wrote that book. I thought it was a download, yeah? Because if you read the 12 and 12, it's totally different than the big book. A totally different feeling. That's Bill reviewing the 15 years he was sober. But the, that, the big book was a download, you know? So he, in a sense, had nothing to do with it. And we're here to make, to mine more stuff out of it. And let's take it farther. They only had four years of sobriety when the book came out. Yeah? Maybe the obsession, the obsession with self is how the mental state reinforces the identification with self. Maybe the real root of the problem is that you're taking yourself to be the problem. Maybe. It works for me. Yeah. And you know what the amazing thing is? It became the last answer. And I've never looked for another answer. And that's a fucking great answer to negate all need for other answers. And AA's provided a way of life for this answer to express itself through. It's unbelievable. 
And AA is the greatest spiritual quote unquote movement in the world. And I've seen a lot of them. Because this place, first of all, a lot of them have, they don't emphasize service, and the service is the key. Because the service gives us a taste of being out of self. Don't you, when you do service, don't you feel bigger? You feel like more available? Well, this is what happened with me doing service. One time, it happened where I did the service, I came out of the ass of self, you know, without a divine proctologist, and popped out of there myself. And I felt big, I felt really freaking available, and I sensed the presence, yeah. And then the whole thing switched around, and I realized I'm the presence. I'm the presence, which means I'm always available, and then I'm of service. Now that's a spirit, not the action, just the action, but the spirit of service. That we are the presence, therefore we're always available, and then we're of, pres we're of service, because just sitting here is of service. Just holding the space is of service, yeah? That's incredible. You could, you could keep service like that train on one track, but let it expand. Let, let gratitude sort of infuse your attitude, yeah? Let it, you know, it can seep in. It can like die you completely. And you and others will be the better for it. So step 11 is the prayer and meditation. And in the beginning, we have time, right? Yeah. Absolutely. In the beginning of AA for me, the worst time was when I woke up. I was scared shit when I woke up because I thought I was under the same old managerial team. I really was a fucking scared shit to deal with another day on my own devices, you know? So I'd, I had this prayer, I wrapped three, the first three steps in it. I would wake up anywhere I was with whoever I was. First thing I did was say, hey, my name is Paul Hedeman, I'm an alcoholic and addict, I'm powerful, da, 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 da. God did that every time. Did it for five years religiously. Then, never did it again. Because what it was a substitute for had filled in. Yeah? yeah. Exactly. I had this prayer I'd always say for five years, pretty much, every day, wherever I was, and then one day, I've never said it since, yes? Because what it was a certain, sort of a substitute for had filled in, yeah? Exactly. The faith had shifted enough from the failed system, which needs, you got to say a lot of fucking prayers when that failed system yeah, is having some say in your day. You know, and we say two prayers every meeting anyway. So when people say you don't pray, I still pray. I go to pray two twice a day. But do you know what I mean? When you grow to a point, the again the the beauty of prayer <laughs> is the is not needing to pray. Yes, isn't there a point? Is it always? Isn't the greatest thing about a tool is when you can you can put it down, or is it gonna? Be, I tell a story, I'll use it now, the pooper scooper story. <laughs> One of my classic ones I like. So it's, it's sort of based on the fourth step. So here's a guy, let's say, and he has a beautiful house like this, and he has a beautiful lawn and a porch, and he has a lot of uh, picnics on the lawn, he has lawn bowling tournaments, you know, people get married on his lawn. And so every morning he jumps off, uh, jumps on the lawn with no shoes and runs around in the morning dew and he hangs around, does angel wings. And then one day he st jumps off and he lands in some shit, yeah? So first thing he has to do is clean off the thing and wear shoes from now on. Then he starts walking around in his lawn. There's a lot of shit all over his lawn. It fucking stinks and he's got this freaking marriage tomorrow. So what he, he goes in, calls up, cancels and he just sits there doesn't know what to do hopes it all goes away goes back out a few hours later there's tons of shit now smells like crazy so now he just pulls down the shades gives up 
goes by some pictures of lawns, you know, sits there <laughs> reminiscing, starts bitching to his friends, and a lot of his friends are having the same experience. Shit, there's so much shit on my lawns, I can't use it for fucking anything. And they start gathering together and having meetings, and they're all talking about it. And then they, this guy finds on the internet pooper scoopers, so he buys a pooper scooper, and it, he starts sharing, and he becomes pretty good. And he starts using two, and then people are calling him up, you know, hey, tell me about that. And oh, yes, this is how you do it, hold it this way. And he becomes like a circuit speaker, and he's talking everywhere at these big conventions about poop and scooping. He's got autograph models. It's not anonymous, you know, autograph models. Got a little leather outfit with his name on it. So now he's going around the world speaking about how to clean up shit really fast. And if you're really good, you'll get about two by six foot piece of your lawn for maybe two hours, you know, and it's like this, so yeah, you know, he has a solution, and a lot of people follow his solution. So some person shows up, hey, go, bro, do you want a solution, want the real solution? He goes, oh, no, I have a solution. The guy says, okay, and starts working it out, and he says, find the dog, leaves, yeah, what? <laughs> you would think the guy would rush towards that message, find the dog, without the dog, there ain't no shit. But now, he's got 800 pooper scoopers in stock. He's got to sell. He's got all these uh, speaking engagements. What about all those autographed leather jackets? Yeah? So he doesn't really want the solution because he thinks he's found the solution. But in this case, just find the dog. The problem is, it's easy to get rid of the dog when you're not, but in this case, you think you're the dog. That's the dilemma. If you see it as not you, there's the freedom. If you see it as you, you're going to look at, you're going to think about freedom from it. When it's, I mean, from it, you know, from its system, instead of seeing it as not you. And the only way you can start seeing it is to hear about it, either a download or someone else, maybe a fucking cathartic event, I don't know, but something has to shake up the system. And now you've been served the spiritual subpoena. You'll be called, you're going to go to court, not the mental court. You've been convicted there already. You're just fucking living a sentence out. But you'll go to the court of light, and all those fucking transgressions will be annulled and voided. Yes. We have the solution. Hmm? We have the solution. We are the solution. Yeah. We have a solution towards living, and we are the solution towards being, yeah? AA is a way of life. Yeah. AA will help us with the living concerning this, but now we have the solution about what or who is actually being. That's yes, right. yes. It changes a lot, man. It doesn't, see, people like, people hear this, this one branch, I do a lot of talks at non-duality, spirituality. And of course, the mental state's gonna claim whatever it hears, so when it hears, this idea of not being a self, it says, well, then I don't have to do any steps. There's no self to do any steps and shit like that. But they end up drunk non-dualists, right? Because <laughs> let's say a, a di someone with diabetes woke up, would they stop shooting insulin? What we have is a sickness of the brain and body. Yeah? Awake or no, you still have alcoholism. It's a parasite. Yes. Because you're actually, to me, the original addiction is the mental addiction to the idea of being a self. That self, that thing, that's what alcoholism affixes to. So self-centeredness, everyone here has the stock version yeah, of self-centeredness. Alcoholism is sort of like taking an acoustic guitar and turning it into an electric guitar. A lot of solos, you know. So the, the, the alcoholism will amplify self-centeredness. Yeah? But the original addiction is the self, the mental state being addicted to self. That's why another, no, none of the other addictions work. Yeah? Because it's the self shooting the coke. Yeah? Yeah? So it can't get relief for itself as itself. So the, the, the one addiction causes all the other addictions. We're trying to get out of self, aren't you, when you do drugs? I was. I was trying to get out of the feelings I thought I had. And the fact is, it never fucking worked. It, you know, it was temporal with a lot of consequences. Yeah? But see, because 
we weren't even addressing the addiction. The addiction isn't to drugs and alcohol, it's to the thinking. The drugs and alcohol were trying to get relief from the first addiction. Yeah? And they worked for a while or we wouldn't have done it. Yeah. So then there's a 12. Well, 11 is, the, no, 12, you have the spiritual awakening. Now, I believe the steps will diminish a mental condition sufficiently that your own seeming spirit will shine through. But it was never produced. It's unproducible. Yeah, you don't produce spirit. So, and then twelve to me is just the agenda of the life of AA. If you're in the life of AA, that's the agenda. You know, you're going to practice these principles in all your affairs. And when I was young in AA, I had to limit my affairs because I couldn't practice them in all my affairs. But I practice these principles in my affairs and, and help other people to achieve sobriety. That's the agenda, yeah. And then you'll be put to use, and you'll be the better for it, and someone else will be too, because the greatest feeling for the hose is the water coming through. And I've never done a talk, ever. If I did a talk, if, I, if it was me going to give this talk, I wouldn't have come to Idaho. No fucking way. A beautiful Italian girlfriend and all to come here to an all men's retreat. I felt like we were we were watching the people going down water. All these women were going, come to all male island. <laughs> <laughs> Shipwreck here. <laughs> 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 yeah. So that was the luck, that was the greatest fortune for me because when I did that, those first talks in AA, the fourth step workshop, I swear, it was so obvious it had nothing to do with me. All I had to do was show up and it's just carried through the next 20, 30 years now. Yeah, it's great. Don't you feel it in the room? You must feel something. That's the energy, that's us. That's the loving presence. So yeah, you want to have questions? Yeah, or that, is that enough? No, yeah. You guys got any questions? <laughs> I know there's plenty out there. How much acid did you say you did? <laughs> <laughs> I did a lot of acid. Yeah. I'm still hot on yeah. acid now. <laughs> but I can't get pulled over for it now. No. It's just like, you can't. That's the whole it's point. Perfect week. I mean, you never, who would want to get high? <laughs> who would want to get high if you are high? Yeah? Yeah. yeah, I mean, people think like we're we're yearning to get yeah. drunk. Fuck that! No. What a you waste know. of time. You're out of self, and you're high if you're out of self. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. You you probably answered this, but I understand you identify yourself as an alcoholic. Yeah. So when you get up in front of a group, how do you introduce yourself? That Same I, way. That I am. An alcoholic? Oh yeah, but that's just language. Okay. Yeah, it's when you think you're an alcoholic and don't want to be, you'll try to fuck around with the language. <laughs> it doesn't matter to me. When in Rome, do as the Romans do. If people are tricky, they've come up with, "I'm a grateful member of AA," so that they don't have to say they're an alcoholic. <laughs> Whatever works. I don't. I don't care. The I am. Does that tattoo me if I say it? No. no. Yeah. Did you ever hear of Werner Erhard and the Yes, I did ask in 73. Some of, 72. Some of the, these ideas and principles of um, transformation, you know, I was pretty heavily involved with some years back and this kind of reignites that feeling of transformation. Great. And I think you may have been influenced to some, have been influenced uh, through him or by him. I've been influenced a lot. That's what's beautiful yeah. about AA. Yeah. You can learn from others. Fuck, it's awesome. You know, I can, at meetings, I can, when I listen to people, I can tell where it's coming from. You know, when you hear, hear people with a lot of time, it has a nice timber, they've really been under that, in that melting pot, they've really been changed. It's beautiful. And other people, you can tell they're speaking from the problem. Yeah, and then you don't want anything to do with that shit. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, wasn't that one of the biggest problems we had? We didn't learn from our own experiences. We couldn't learn from other people's experiences. Yeah. yeah. It's a great gift. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Thank you.
You know, Paul, I don't, uh, in all seriousness, uh, and I, I'm not really good at relationships, and how in the hell did you find this uh, Italian beauty did this? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to edit this talk. <laughs> I knew it was going to go this way. How long were you I, was, I had a pause before I said it. I had a pause I'm before I said it. You know what? Really, to be, can we, yeah, you want to shut that off? Because this is very personal.